What's up guys, if you haven't seen, Bungie just dropped the season of the Drifter by Doc and basically everything that's going to be coming in Joker's Wild and I'm excited to cover some of that news in this video. I'm basically just going to be doing an overview of everything in the video. So first up, just going over our first encounters and what we're going to have to do right in the beginning. So there's going to be a lot of lore associated with the Drifter and the Nine. Apparently, they're apparently working together on something. We don't know what. We don't know if it's good or bad. I really don't know. I'm super excited. Um, first up, we're going to be hopping into the new mode, which is Gambit Prime. And basically, we're just going to complete one match of that is what they say. And then we're going to work our way to the new pinnacle endgame PvE activity called The Reckoning, which is hosted in the Plains of the Nine, which is freaking insane. And then apparently, the gear that we get from The Reckoning will improve, like our stats and perks and whatnot for Gambit Prime specifically. First up, let's go over Gambit Prime. What is it? Essentially, this is a sweatier version of Gambit with only one round. So on day one, it's going to feel like a kind of like a normal Gambit, and then it's going to kind of transition into something a little more hardcore. Uh, obviously, they're going to make it a little harder considering it is only one round, you know. So in Gambit Prime, there are some new mechanics. So players can actually drain moats from the enemy team, which is something very different. And I'm interested to see how it plays out. I'm assuming... Um, from what I saw in the footage, there is a tank in uh, Phalanx that's like the boss, um, like in the Lake of Shadows, and that seems to drain the moats. So there must be a way that we can actually send that specific blocker over, which again, is going to be pretty freaking cool. For the Primeval, there are some new strategies your team is going to have to do to actually put some DPS out on them. They said it's almost like a mini raid encounter, so I'm assuming there's going to be some sort of steps we're going to have to go through to make sure we can actually DPS this boss. So it seems that there's going to be a separate directory for Gambit, like uh, the Crucible or Vanguard playlist. Um, there's going to be a Gambit playlist, which is pretty cool. Um, obviously, now with Gambit Prime, there's going to be multiple types of activities, another one of them being private matches for Gambit, which Again, Bungie is hoping we'll start some tournaments. And plus, it also gives you a chance to check out the map layout for the new maps, which is New Arcadia, which is on Mars, and then Deep Six, which is on Titan. And those are just the ones we currently know of. If you just want to check out the maps before you actually hop into Gambit Prime, you can do that. So maybe have a little extra knowledge where the enemies are going to spawn and stuff like that. Next, there's new armor sets. Yes, new armor sets for Gambit, finally. Pretty awesome. I'm really tired of the toilet bowl um titan gauntlets really tired of those but uh what's pretty cool you can actually put some sort of ornament on them kind of like the glow thing that you could do in destiny one for some of the uh armor which is pretty cool um essentially this indicates what role you are playing in a match bungie wanted to expand on the four types of soft roles that are associated with gambit so first up the reaper which is going to be the green glow this is the slayer who takes out as many enemies as possible so this is the person who just shreds through guys right next you have the collector which is going to have the white uh glow who collects as many most as possible will be able to send a lot and potentially even bigger blockers so that's going to be that one sentry which is going to be yellow this is the person who makes sure the bank is open by taking down the blockers i really like taking down the blockers and letting my team get a lot more moats so we can send over bigger blockers like i think sentry is going to be one of the things that i really enjoy doing and obviously you have the invader which is going to be the red color the red glow who's obviously going to go over to the enemy team arena and bother them invader is going to be pretty cool too i definitely love invading next up there's going to be a new set of weapons that's coming to the drifters inventory finally i'm definitely ready for some new weapons so as of right now there's going to be a hand cannon called the spare rations a sniper called the soul survivor and a grenade launcher called doomsday uh, those are the ones that we know of so far but it looks like there's going to be a new auto rifle a pulse rifle a scout rifle a shotgun a machine gun and maybe a few other weapons as well i don't know if we're going to be getting a rocket launcher or potentially even something like a fusion rifle or a sidearm i guess we'll just have to wait and see now something i did notice is that the drifter is going to be in his ship this time around, he's going to be in a new location where we're going to have to go to him. And Bungie actually talks about new bounties called Power Surge Bounties. These are essentially like prime engram drops to help you boost your power, but obviously you can pick up the bounty, which is a lot faster than waiting for a prime engram, right? But they say that if you're below 640 power, you should be able to hit 640 within the first few hours of Joker's Wild, so you're not spending a bunch of time trying to grind up. That was a problem with Black Armory. Uh, to where you couldn't really do the activity unless you did a week or two of like uh powerful gear drops which kind of sucks so they really address this and i really like how they went about that especially with that because i know a lot of people complain about black armory so i think this is going to be good going over the gambit prime bounties apparently for gambit prime there are going to be a set of different bounties you can pick up that's specific to that 
activity. I'm assuming the regular Gambit bounties can be done in Gambit Prime as well. Like that, I'm assuming that's what you can do. But it's cool that you actually have Gambit Prime specific bounties, which I'm assuming give you unique rewards and actually uh, bump up your infamy rank a little more. Now let's go over the Reckoning. This, again, is going to be the end game activity for Season 6, considering we're not getting a raid this time around. So it seems that we're going to have to slay through all the enemies as quickly as possible because this is a timed activity. Uh, I'm assuming it's going to be like the Haunted Forest from Festival of Lost, where you have a certain time limit. Um, I'm, not, I'm not sure if that's 100% correct, but I'm assuming from what they said, the mechanics are going to be something like that. I don't know if we get more time for killing ads or anything like that, so I'm just going to assume that is kind of what it is and from what it looks like it just looks like chaos just complete chaos with taken everywhere we're just you're definitely going to have to have high tier pve weapons and definitely exotics to pair with this like blade barrage with shards of gown or like a hammer titan with um the Syntheseps, the orpheus rig tether the nova bomb with uh oh what's that helmet the skull of dire ahamkara like this is going to be a hard activity that is what they said and it, you're gonna definitely want uh supers and stuff that can really slay out so once we get through this activity uh essentially like there's going to be three difficulty tiers so obviously first up is going to be tier one and i'm assuming uh as time goes on and as your power level increases you're going to be able to unlock tier two and tier three for this activity which again is probably just going to give you um that gambit uh, prime gear. Oh yeah, by the way, this activity is going to be the way you get that new Gambit Prime gear, which has those top tier perks specifically for that game mode. So maybe the higher tier, the better uh, perks you get on it. Maybe it's just like a power level thing. I'm not 100% sure, but it seems pretty interesting. They didn't mention this, but I do want to quickly go over the pinnacle weapons for season six. So going over the Crucible, we only get a sneak peek, but it looks like it's going to be a Vice submachine gun, which was my favorite type of weapon to use in year one. I really just like Vice weapons overall, and it's going to be really cool to see them make a comeback, especially as an SMG. I know a lot of people wanted a sniper, um, but an SMG is one of those things that's completely non-meta, and it's going to definitely come with an interesting perk, which is going to be cool. For the Vanguard, again, we only get a glimpse, but it looks like it's going to be like an Omelon Scout Rifle with some version of Dragonfly or Firefly, whatever you want to call it. It's a big explosion from what I saw, man. Like, I don't know. But definitely pretty interesting. I like Omelon weapons as well, especially year one. Definitely love my Manana Nan Scout Rifle. That thing's pretty good. So it's going to be cool to see them make a comeback as well for Gambit. There's no mention of a Gambit Pinnacle weapon, but I'm assuming there is one considering the whole season is based around Gambit. There's also going to be some exotic quest. Thorn is confirmed to be back. So that's freaking awesome. I really wasn't surprised it's coming back since we got the last word and the Thorn, they're like rivals essentially. So it's going to be pretty cool. Um, assuming it's going to operate like it did in Destiny 1, like the little damage over time, that tick over time. But in any event, in week two, we actually get access to the Thorn quest. So, I mean, hey, I'm totally down for that. There's apparently going to be a second exotic quest, which... They, they said there's two exotic quests. One is specifically for Joker's Wild, and the other one is specifically for anybody who has Forsaken. I don't know if Thorn is going to be specifically for um, Season 6 or Joker's Wild, or it's going to be specific for everybody who owns Forsaken. So that's going to be pretty interesting to figure out how that goes down. But the second exotic weapon, there was no mention of it at all, and I'm pretty excited to figure out what it is. There's also going to be an event, just like there was with Forsaken. We had Festival of the Lost, and with Black Armor, we had the Dawning. But for this time around, for Joker's Wild, there's going to be a spring event called the Reverie. Uh, obviously, there's not going to be, like, there wasn't a lot of talk about this right now because they're focusing on current stuff but i'm assuming it's going to be like festival of the lost or the dawning we also get a tiny tiny glimpse of season of opulence which is season seven and we actually get a name for that now and obviously they're testing on this right now with this upcoming dlc but it seems to be revolving around the leviathan and callus which is going to be freaking sick i hope we can actually go to the leviathan and have it be kind of like a patrol thing which would be interesting like how cool would it be if we actually work with cabal like the cabal on the ship versus the red legion like how freaking cool would that be we're now at the end of the video guys i hope you enjoyed it but there are three things i want to go over first up my clan the d1 fire team is looking for active players in the destiny community our members play all sorts of activities from casual pve and pvp to the end game content if you're actively playing destiny 2 and want the benefits of a bigger clan the link to join is below it'll say clan link all you have to do is request to join and myself or one of the admins will approve you if you're with a smaller clan and want the benefits of a bigger clan 
and you have like let's say like seven to ten members i'm just using that as an example but if you want to come over just send me a message on any of my social media links and we'll try to get something set up number two if you want to help support me, there's a link below that says best way to support me. That'll take you to a four minute video. If you want to go check that out, that'd be awesome. But if you don't want to do that, you can always like this video, subscribe to the channel, share this video and all that good jazz. If you want to do any of those things. Lastly, we have a link to the community discord below. Just a heads up, we're looking for anyone with moderator experience to potentially run the discord. I know for myself, I'm more of a player instead of a manager. So if you have some moderator experience, just send me a message and we'll try to get something set up. I know for myself, I'm on Xbox, but if you guys would like to talk or chat with me, discord is going to be the best way to do those things. All right, guys, hope you enjoy this video. We'll catch you next time.